If you've seen the recent headlines about heavy metals in protein powder, you're probably panicking about whether or not your daily shake is slowly poisoning you. Well, I'm going to break down what consumer reports actually found and give you my dietitian's take on what you should do next to protect yourself. And if we haven't met before, I'm Marie and I'm a registered dietitian. Let's get straight into it. So Consumer Reports recently tested a bunch of popular protein powders for heavy metals. And yes, they found measurable levels in many products, particularly the plant-based protein powders. And the headlines went wild. Everyone panicked and I actually panicked myself a little bit when I saw them first. But after spending hours diving deeper, here is what those headlines forgot to tell you. So first, Consumer Reports used a 0.5 micrograms of lead per day as their level of concern. And that benchmark comes from California's Proposition 65, one of the most conservative standards in the world. So when you see headlines saying that a product was 1500% times this level, it sounds really dramatic. But that comparison is against an extremely strict threshold, not an official federal or EU safety limit. Also, to help put things into context, one of the products tested was a vegan mass gainer, not just your typical protein powder. And one serving of a mass gainer was six scoops, not the typical one scoop you would usually use if you were adding protein powder to your oats in the morning or to a smoothie. So when you're taking six scoops of something as opposed to one, there is obviously going to be more exposure. Now, another important thing to note is that heavy metals are literally everywhere. They're in the soil, the water, the air that we breathe, which means they're in your spinach, your sweet potatoes, your chocolate, your rice, and yes, your protein powder. So the real question isn't, does my protein powder contain heavy metals? Because the answer is always going to be yes. The actual question that we need to ask is, are the levels high enough to actually cause harm? And that is where things get interesting. But before I dive deep into the science, because I know that might be overkill for some people, here are my main takeaways as a dietitian. Firstly, we don't need to panic. Protein powder is not suddenly dangerous. However, do you actually need protein powder? If you're already getting enough protein from food, like your Greek yogurt, your eggs, your beans, your tofu, then protein powder is just a convenience, not a necessity. I personally don't use it every day, but I do like to use it occasionally if I'm baking or making a ninja creamy or if I have a smoothie. So if you use protein powder occasionally, then you're at a very low risk and I wouldn't be too worried. Now you should always try to make sure that the protein powder that you choose is third party tested. And this becomes even more important if it is something that you do use daily. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in a moment. Now, if you are pregnant or if you're trying to conceive, this is where I would start to become a lot more choosy. And I would pay more for a brand that has very transparent testing. And lastly, you shouldn't be giving protein powder to kids. This isn't just because of the heavy metals, but they are designed for adults and tested for safety in adults. And kids should ideally be having whole foods. Now, if you make baked goods of protein powder and your kid has some here and there, I wouldn't be too concerned, but it's not something that you should be proactively trying to give them. And the exception for this is if your child has a medical condition or faltering growth. But in these situations, your doctor or a pediatric dietitian, they will be guiding you on what to give to your child. Other things you could do to minimize your exposure is rotate between different protein powders or choose a whey-based protein powder rather than a plant protein powder, as these often tend to have less heavy metals than the plant powders. But if you prefer plant-based, there are still good options. I'd recommend looking for a brand that is transparent about heavy metal testing in particular. And when researching for this video, I'd found two valid options. One was the Ritual Essentials Protein Shake and the other one was the Form Protein. Now I'm sure there are many others, but these were both informed, sport certified, and had transparent results for their heavy metal testing. And finally, the last thing that I would recommend that you do is that you check your water. Lead exposure also comes from old plumbing and tap water. So using a certified lead removing filter can lower your total daily exposure way more than switching protein powders ever could. I'll leave the one that I use linked below. So when it comes to choosing a protein powder, the gold standard is looking for either the Informed Sport logo or the NSF Certified for Sport logo. What you can do is you can go on their website. I'll leave all of the links down below, but you can type into the search bar the product that you have and search to see if it is on their database. Now there is also an Informed Choice logo. It's not the same 
as the informed sport logo, but this is also quite good and fine for a lot of people. The difference here is that they don't test every single batch. So if you're an athlete that is drug tested or you want to be extra, extra safe, then the informed sport or the NSF logo is what you need to stick with. Now, just diving a little bit more into the report, plant-based proteins consistently test higher for heavy metals. And there's a reason for this. Lead and other metals occur naturally in soil, air, and water. Plants absorb trace amounts as they grow. And when those plants are processed into a powder, those traces become more concentrated. So it's not that plant-based protein powders are toxic. It's just the reality of where they come from. And chocolate flavor anything also tends to test higher because cocoa naturally contains more cadmium and cocoa plants are really good at absorbing heavy metals from the soil. And whey protein generally tests cleaner than your plant-based options. Egg white protein also tends to be lower. But again, this doesn't mean that you need to avoid plant-based proteins entirely. Just be smart about it. Now diving into the numbers. So as mentioned, the report was based on the Prop 65 warnings, which are about the right to know what's in a product, not proof that it's unsafe. And the cutoff here is that 0.5 micrograms of lead per day. But to put this into context, the FDA's interim reference level for lead is 2.2 micrograms per day for children and 8.8 .8 for females of childbearing age. And in Europe, the European Food Safety Authority, they don't set a daily safe limit for lead because ideally, it would be zero. So instead they use benchmarks and these benchmark levels estimate risk. And using these levels for a 60 kg adult, so around 130 pounds, you would need to consume roughly 30 micrograms of lead per day from all sources combined, like your food, the environment, supplements, to exceed the lowest benchmark. So while the levels in protein powders are measurable, they're not typically dangerous for most healthy adults using them occasionally. The concern grows with daily use, multiple servings, or if you're pregnant, trying to conceive or giving it to children. And the mission of this video isn't to like um, defend protein powders. I really think they have their place, but only if you need them. You don't need them. As I said myself, I don't use them daily. But I suppose I'm just sick of headlines scaring everybody about everything that we try to eat. There comes a point where almost nothing feels safe anymore. And that's not healthy either. So to wrap up, yes, heavy metals in protein powder, they are a legitimate concern. But the way it's reported causes unnecessary panic without giving people proper context or tools to actually reduce their risk. And headlines are always going to be dramatic. It's impossible to avoid all lead completely, which isn't realistic. And honestly, if you're worried about supplements, protein powders should not even be on the top of the list. There's a lot of sketchy weight loss supplements and black market GLP ones that are much more concerning. But overall, I really do hope that this video has been helpful and has helped you maybe feel a little bit less stressed about the whole situation. If you have any comments or questions, please just drop them below and I'm more than happy to help. And if there is any topic you would like me to cover next, just let me know. As I thank you for watching, I have a free recipe ebook, which I will leave linked down below. And if you enjoyed the video, YouTube thinks you would like to watch this one next. As always, thank you very much for watching. Stay happy and stay healthy and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.